Okay. Um, I don't. I don't believe I. I need this mic. So I think everyone can can hear me. Yeah. Without this, can you hear me now? Everyone, great. You must have been wondering. Um, was that guy who was sending confusing email since mm -hmm. last yesterday and today? Sorry about that. So it just uh, as I explained my emails, I just had. Uh, an old version of the timetable, so, and I start sending emails, and then everyone just coming back to me, there's something wrong with my timetable, and you thought that the problem with your timetable, which is in fact the problem is with my timetable, not yours. <coughs> so, my name is Hani Abdul Latif, and um, I'll be your lecturer uh, this term for MN 1015 Economics for Business, Economics 1 for Business. Um, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take you through um, the first question that you should ask yourself if you're studying economics. What is economics? Have you done economics before? Do you know what economics is? Yeah. Sort of, yeah? Okay. So um, the first lecture, which is the first hour, um, I'll be trying to tell you the idea that everything you do in your life is related to economics. So if I'm able to do that by the end of the lecture, so um, I've done my job today. Um, I could ask you a few questions, and then we'll come back at the end, toward the end, we'll come back to these questions again. So have you, um, have you uh, first, first of all, how do you come to, how many of you came to the lecture today by bus? Okay, cycling, walking, great. So you made decisions, yeah, how to come to this lecture. So there are different stuff like that. How, how many of you would have thought to not turn up today for the lecture and they would have done something differently? So I guess some of you, I mean, some, some of the students who didn't turn up today, they made the decision to not be here today. But you have made the decision to be here today and use this time to attend uh, this lecture. So just remember those points, and probably we'll come back to this again at the end of the lecture. So what is this? Hopefully, at the end of the term, you will be, we'll see happy faces like this. These are my students from last year. So hopefully when you um, finish this course, it was a different course. It wasn't uh, economics and business. It was a econometrics course. But hopefully, at the end of the, the term, we'll have a nice picture with smiley faces uh, at the end, so hopefully I'll try my best. So as I said today, the main or oh, the first uh, the first hour, the first lecture, I will be uh, trying to discuss with you what economics is. I'll just have or we'll have an, uh, a very brief journey on what we would expect uh, from economics, and I will try to show you even if you you're not uh, if you're not doing economics as a major, as uh, are the main degree, if you're not lucky enough to be an economist, you should learn how to think like an economist. So it doesn't matter what you do. I know you do, um, you're doing probably business degree or different, different programs, you're not, you're not doing economics. But at the end of this lecture, I'm trying to show you, I'll try to show you by the end of this lecture that you need to think as an economist. So first of all, as I said, What's economics? That's what we're trying to do today. Economics, it's all about the economic problem, and the economic problem faces everyone, faces every nation, faces, what, doesn't matter how rich you are or how rich a nation is, so they're still facing economic problems. So what is the economic problem? So this problem is, as I said, all units. When I talk about economic units or economic agents, so I mean individuals, firms, countries, any group or unit that can make decisions. So the idea here is all about scarcity. So you always have uh, scarce resources compared to your, uh, your wants. So we have two things or two sides of the problem. Um, and that's why I'm saying scarcity here is a relative concept. So you have unlimited wants and that's why the resources are scarce. So they are scarce compared to, compared to your wants. So they always have this, this problem. So you always want more than you can do, more than your, um, uh, the resources you have. 
So if you think of the, um, how many hours you have a day, let's say you have, uh, we have 24 hours, but let's say you probably sleep for uh, eight hours, then the remaining time, so you need to think how to devote this between two things, between probably work, or work, study, or leisure, three things, for example. So you cannot fit everything in that time. So you need to think carefully how you're going to allocate these time or these resources uh, between different, different activities. So if you think when you go shopping, for example, again, so this is another example of how scarce, how the, how the, pro the economic problem faces you as individuals. Um, if you think when you go to shopping, doing shopping, buying clothes or whatever you, you're buying, you all think, oh, I need to make a decision what to buy because I can't buy everything. So you cannot buy everything you want. So then it comes, the, the main, uh, 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 the main uh, point here in economics or what we're looking at is how we're making uh, choices. So we make choices, choices to cope with this scarcity because if I can't do everything, if I can't buy everything, then there's no problem, okay? So there's no scarcity then. So I can do everything, I can buy everything I want. So as I said, all economic agents, all economic units faces, uh, face, face the problem, the economic problem. So the U.S., for example, the U.S. economy, that's the, 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 um, probably the uh, biggest economy in the world, they still face the same problem. So if you think of the, um, I don't know how, um, how many of you would, need, uh, would know uh, very rich people. So if you ask any rich person you know whether they can buy everything they want or whether they face the economic problem in that sense, and probably they will tell you the same thing. They will be always looking forward to buy or to get things that they cannot, um, uh, I mean, their resources cannot buy everything, cannot give them everything they want. So what, whatever they, 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 um, the thing they're looking forward to have. So at the end of the day, you have to make choices. So every one of us has to make choices to cope with scarcity. So whatever choice you make, and at the same time, you have this trade-off, you, you will have to sacrifice something else. So if you decide to buy something, if you, if you, buy, if you decide to buy a t-shirt, so probably you've, uh, you've you have to sacrifice something else. First of all, you sacrifice the money you have, so you have to pay for that, uh, for that T-shirt. And also, probably you could have um, go to buy different things, like probably T-shirts and trousers or whatever. And then, because of this scarcity, because of the money in your uh, pocket, does not allow you to buy everything you want. Then you made a choice, and once you make a choice, then there's you you have sacrificed something else. So you have to give up something else. So choices means once you make choice, when, when you came today, and that probably relates to the question that I started with today, when you came today, you decided to devote this time to attend this lecture, you could have uh, done something different, okay? Probably some other students, they decided to not turn up today to the lecture because again, they make choice, they, making their, 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 they made the choice to not come, because they want to do something different. So whatever, whatever choice you make, then you have sacrificed something. You have, give, you have given up something in, in the same time. So you, devote that, you devoted that time. You could have been doing something different now, but you decided to use that time. Think of time now as your resources. And the way you're using your resources, that's what we do in economics. That's what we try. That's what we try to study in economics. So if you want to, Probably if you want to give a very simple definition of economics, it could be the study of making uh, choices. So that's what we try, we try to do uh, in this lecture. So when I told you about, when I asked you about the way you decided to come to uh, the university today, some of, some of you came by bus, some of you came cycling or uh, uh, walking, then these are choices you make, okay, every day. And again, these are economics related decisions. So the way you decide, it, we will see uh, probably later on today that we will think of this in a rational way. So the reason you decided to come by cycling because probably this is maybe uh, cheaper or this is, I mean, whatever the reason you decided to come cycling or to come by bus, you have 
compared different, or you have thought of different ways to, uh, to come to the, the university or to this lecture, and then you've made your uh, decision, you've made that choice to come by bus or cycling or maybe walking. So again, so all these are choices, and again, all these are economics. And as I said, whether you are an economist or not, you need to think as an economist, because that's what everyone does, even without realizing that they do that. Okay? So, again, so we have um, the economic problem, we have unlimited wanted, scarce resources, and for that reason, we have to make choices to cope with this. Uh, problem and once you make a choice you have given up something else or you have you have to give up something in, in the same time so that's what we call in economics the opportunity cost so the opportunity cost in that case would be the highest valued alternative that you have to give up to get that choice okay so if you decided to buy a t-shirt for example then you paid money you sacrifice the money or if you decided to do a university degree, you could have uh, done something different, and probably um, um, being like in a job, taking a job or a job offer or whatever. Then in the same time, even if you didn't have a job offer, you're sacrificing the money and the time as well. Okay? So always we think of the uh, opportunity cost, and every choice has an opportunity cost. Any decision you make has an opportunity cost. And you can think of anything you do in your life in that way. So now we move to the, the scope of economics. <coughs> then we know about the economic problem. We know about um, that everyone has, um, or we have unlimited wants, but in the same time, the resources are uh, scarce or are limited, and we need to make choices, and whatever choice we make, it has an opportunity cost. So what do we do in economics? As I said, we try to study this, uh, uh, or agents, the way they make uh, uh, their, their choices. So again, when I talk about economic agents, as, as I said, we talk about individuals, firms, countries, etc. cetera. So um, all uh, units that can uh, make such uh, choice. So we have in economics two big questions, and these two big questions can summarize the scope of economics. Of course, we're not going to cover everything in this module. We'll be focusing on two main topics, as you will see later. But the first question is, what do choices end up determining? What, how, for whom goods and services get uh, produced? So to satisfy your uh, wants, we need to produce. We need to produce goods and services. So the question here, what to produce, is a very important question. So because we cannot, why, why do we have to say to ask that question? Because we cannot simply, we simply cannot produce everything. So remember, resources are limited. So we cannot produce everything. So we have to ask this question: what to produce? And if resources are limited, then we need to think how to produce this. Okay, so we try to find out about the uh, most efficient way to use these resources. Why? Because these resources are scarce. So we need to think carefully about the way we, um, we produce. And then, to who, uh, for whom goods and services are produced, then when we produce, how this will be distributed among those who contributed to this uh, production, to, in, in this production uh, process. So that's the first question. How do choices end up determining what, how, and for whom goods and services are, get produced? Then the second question, when do choices um, made in the pursuit of self-interest also promote the social interest? So that's what I'm going to be talking about now, these two questions. So, but very quickly, so the idea of certain interests here, when you make a decision, um, whatever, like this, this decision, you think of your uh, benefit, you think of, uh, or, or if, if, if you want to uh, decide how uh, beneficial or how good this, or how rational this choice or this decision is, then you think from your side. Okay? But the, in the same time, we think about, so what about the society? What about the... Um, the whole community. So we need to think of when 
do these choices made in the person of self-interest because each one of us will be thinking about their self-interest. They're not going to be thinking about the social interest. But when we make this individual decisions, uh, achieve or promote in the same time the social, uh, the social interest. Again, we're looking at a very, very uh, broad picture of what economics says. So, for example, here, uh, if, we know, if we want to talk about what to produce, so this uh, figure show you uh, the uh, percentage of production for agriculture, manufacturing services in three countries, United States, <laughs> Brazil, and uh, China. So, how do they make these decisions? So, they, if you look at the agriculture, for example, the agriculture production in the agriculture sector in the United States, how much it contributes to the total uh, uh, output in the United States, and you compare this with Brazil and China, so you will realize that there are decisions are made here about how to use the, the resources in, in different ways. So that's a very uh, big example of how, or very uh, uh, simple example of how uh, uh, we, we, we can make decision about what to, to produce. So when we talk about how, so we try to, now we understand to satisfy wants, we need to produce goods and services, but now how? So how we uh, look at the way we produce uh, goods and services, we have resources, and these resources um, could be uh, summarized under the fact of production into four categories. Land, capital, labor, entrepreneurship. Or enterprise. So we have four categories of factors of production. So you can group any um, anything in the uh, input in the production process into one or under one one of these uh, categories: land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. So when economists talk about land, they they mean the gifts of nature, so that are used to produce goods and services. So anything natural resources that comes under land. So the work time, the work efforts that people devote to produce goods and services, this is uh, labor. So we have four factors of production, land, labor, capital, enterprise, or inter entrepreneurship. So land, as I said, we mean by land all natural resources. Uh, labor, we mean by labor the time and efforts. Um, that people devote to produce goods and, and services. So also the quality of this labor is important, which depends on what we call the human capital. So the human capital uh, in any nation uh, means the knowledge and, and skill that people obtain from education, on, uh, on the job training, and work experience. So these all show up the human capital in, in, a, in a given nation or in a country. So the quality, so it's not just the amount of labor, it's the quality of labor as well, uh, as well matters. So what about capital? So the four factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. So in, when you talk about capital as factor of production, we mean all tools and instruments, machines, building, other constru uh, constructions that businesses use uh, for <laughs> producing um, goods and, and services. <coughs> the last one here is enterprise. So this is the factor that combine these all together. Land, the natural resources, labor, capital, take the rest and um, the, uh, and, 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 and combine these together to produce the uh, goods, uh, goods and services. So these are uh, entrepreneurship. So we have four. So now we're thinking of how. So how here is a very open question because we have four uh, categories here or four factors of production. So the way we combine these together, that's how. Okay? So remember what we're looking at here, we're looking at very big question economics. What to produce? Why do we need to ask this question? Why do we need to ask ourselves this question? What to produce? Why don't we just produce everything we want? Exactly, resources are limited, so we can't produce everything, so we have to ask the question, okay? 
And then the next question, or the next part of this question is how. So when we think of how, we need to think of these four factors of production. How we, combine, we, how we can combine these four factors of production to, to produce goods and services. And then you need to think of for whom. So then who gets the goods and services? This will depend on income. Okay? So, and by participating in, or by being part of the production process, these factors of production has returns. So land or natural resources would earn uh, rent, labor would earn uh, wages, capital earns uh, interest, and entrepreneurship, because this is the factor that uh, combine all this together, then they earn uh, uh, profit. They take in uh, the rest. To, to do this, and that's why the return for entrepreneurship is called profit. So now we think, uh, or we have looked at these uh, three questions, what, and uh, what, how, and for who. So we go back to the next part of the question, or the second big question in economics. So, so that's one, one big question in economics. Then this is the second part, or the second uh, question that would explain the, the big scope of, of economics. So when do choice is made in the pursuit of sales interest also to promote the social uh, interest? So we need to first think of sales interest and social interest. So people make choices every day of what, how, and for whom. So they, 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 they make choices about the first part of the, the scope of economics when you talk about the first big question. So the idea here, as I said in the beginning, so when they make their decisions, when they make the, these choices, they think of themselves. They think of their own self-interest. So the big question now, how this would promote the social interest as well. So this will take us to another aspect in economics we all think of, which is efficiency. So we now we're thinking of the best, uh, what is the best for the society as a whole? So when we think of efficiency, so the idea of efficiency here is when you use resources in an efficient way, so it means that it's not possible to make someone better off without making someone else worse off. Okay? So that's the, in that case, or in this situation, probably we'll be promoting the social interest as well. So again, when we think of the social interest, then we think of the efficiency, and efficiency means when you use resources in an efficient way, that means it is not possible to make someone better off without making someone else uh, worse off. The other aspect of this question, which is equity or fairness, and this is a very um, debatable uh, part of the question, and economists all have different uh, views about what is fair and what is not. Okay? So now we, we looked at these two big questions. So we, we looked at the economic problem first. That's, uh, that's the, the, the core economics. And that's what happened with everyone of us. That's what I'm saying. We do economics without <laughs> even realizing that even if we're not economists, we have to deal with economics. We have to make choices. We have to make decisions. And that's economics. So we can do that because we have limited resources, unlimited wanted, uh, unlimited wants, and then uh, once you make a choice, then that means you sacrifice something in the same time, so you give up something in, in, uh, in the same time, and that is the opportunity cost. Then we move to talk about the, how the uh, two big question economics that determine or that choose the school of economics. So the first question is what? To produce because we cannot produce the thing, and then we need to think of how to produce because resources are limited, resources are scarce, and we need really to think of the uh, most efficient way to use these. So we need to make decisions about how to produce, and then at the end, for whom uh, these um, goods and services uh, are being used. 
Then we move to the second part of the question, or the second big question in economics that determines the school of economics is how, uh, when we <coughs> individuals making these choices, they think of their own selves, they think of their own interests, how this would promote social, um, social interest. So, the second part of this lecture, as I said, so I'll show you how important to think as an economics. So then that we need to learn about thinking, uh, or economic way of thinking. So a choice is a trade-off. That's very important. And that's something now I hope you understand. Because the idea of even very simple decision, um, like how to come to this lecture, or either to come to this lecture or not, this is a decision. So this is a choice. So there's a trade-off. <coughs> so you could uh, be doing anything now, but you decided to come to that next to this lecture. <coughs> so that's a choice. There's a trade-off. So that's the way we think as an economics or as economics. And I think that's what everyone. Uh, that's the way everyone probably thinks. But at the same time, as I said, we will make these decisions even if we uh, we don't realize that they are still related to economics. So people make rational choices by compare, comparing benefits to costs. So the reason he came to this lecture today, probably because if you have something else in mind to do, you compare how beneficial or how important to come and see this guy who's in confusing emails today, probably maybe you will learn something, but then, and you decided not to do the other thing. So I don't know what you could do, what else you could do at this time. This would be different from one to another. Some, some of you probably will play football, some of you will, I don't think it's this day to be in, uh, in the beach now. It's not, well, it's still okay to be outside, but anyway. So I, I mean, there are different, different uh, things that you could have been doing now, but you decided to be here today. So how did you decide this? You required to make this, or you made this rational choice and how to make, or how to decide whether this choice is rational or not. So you compare the benefits to the cost. So what is the benefit? So the benefit here is, or the benefit is what you gain from something. The cost is what you must give up to get something. So you compare these two, and then based on that, you make a choice. So most of the choices are how much choices made at the margin, and I'll explain this more later. So, and also choices respond to incentives. So let's look at this uh, more closely. So again, as I said, making a rational choice, this means you have or you try to achieve the greatest benefits over force. Force for whom? For the person who making the choice, for yourself. So when you decided to be here today, you thought that it's not the best thing to do, is to attend this lecture, compared to any other, uh, any, any, anything else you would have done in, this, in the same time. So you try to achieve the greatest benefit over any force, and that's again, that's from your, um, uh, from your own side, so this is your own thinking, not, not what I think on your behalf. So that's for yourself. So that's why I'm saying we, you achieve the greatest benefit over force for the person making uh, the choice. So in that case, rationality is relative to you, so to the person who's making the choice, not for anyone else. Then. How do people choose rationally? Then again, is benefit and and cost. And benefit and benefit and cost. Something is related to preferences. Preferences here are, is when you think about preferences is what what a person likes and dislikes and the intensity of those feelings. So. Like what you what you prefer to do in this time, being in lecture or being somewhere else. So this is something you could prefer, or or could be a, uh, subject to your preference. You could think of this when you buy a T-shirt, when you buy anything, when you go shopping. So you have different brands. Again, what you decide at the end, which which product you buy, it will depend on your uh, preferences. So it's what it's about what you like and what you dislike. Okay, so what about the margin? So when I told you we have, let's say, 15 hours a day, and think of these as resources. 
So the way you allocate these 16 hours between different activities, let's say um, study, work, uh, leisure time, like hanging out with friends, and so on. So the way you think of this, then <laughs> that's how you use the available resources. But the idea here is you, when you decide to go out or to hang out with friends, it's not a question of whether I'm going to use the 16 hours to do that or not. So when you think at the margin, that means should I spend more time, like an extra hour studying, or should I use that hour hanging out with friends? So that's the incremental, or what, what we think is, it's not the yes or no. It's not that I'm going to use all these resources to do that or not. So the idea here is, when you make that choice, is how many hours or how many minutes you allocate to each uh, activity. Then again, you compare the benefits of a little bit more study time, for example, with its cost. So what if I study for one more hour? What if I study, then I think of, so I'm not thinking whether to study or not. I have 16 hours, or probably when I, went, uh, when I go back from uh, university, I have four hours before I go to bed, so or, or five hours. So how am I going to use these five hours? Should I study two hours? Okay. So what if I study three hours? Then you think of the benefits and you compare this to the cost, and then that's what we mean by the choices are made at the margin. So you try to think of, or you compare the benefits of a little bit more of study time with its cost. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can ask me questions, yeah? So you feel free to interrupt me at any, any point. Is everything clear? I'm just going uh, very quickly through this material. Do you want me to slow down, or do you want, to, do you want me to repeat anything I've said? Do you have any questions about what we said so far? Yeah. But the margin. So you have, as I said, you have four hours to go back, to back, to go back from the university then. Okay. So let's say you have two choices. Okay. You go in as a sprint, with the same amount of bath or whatever, yeah. or study. So the question in economics is not yes or no. So it's how many hours I'm going to do, and how many hours I'm going to have. So let's say if you initially start off, okay, I'm going to say uh, one hour to do study and then three hours going out with my friends. Then this say the red line is a fortune, but this is something that uh, we'll find. It's something I'm going to show at the end when uh, we're going to set at the end when the define the on the sign. Then we thought, oh, so the red line is a fortune gap. So if I go for one hour, if I study one hour, and go out for three hours, then the cost is very high now. Because I'm going to miss something that's signed in five. So what should I do here? Should I study more, one more hour? So now the decision is not yes, I'm going to go out for four hours, or I'm going to study four hours. No, how much, or how much, how many hours, or how much time you would be bored for at least two so just to simplify things, if you look at two choices, you look at different things, you could have you could have three choices, four choices, and then for different activities, three, four activities. Okay? And then you're thinking how you're gonna allocate time or how you're gonna how much time you're gonna devote for each one. Then again, when you think of the activities, these activities, you're trying to see if what if I increase my study time by one hour? So how I would make this decision? The way I would think is, well, if I do that, I'll finish the assignment. That means I can submit on time, okay? If I don't do that, so the call says, so if I didn't do that, that means if I decided to go out of my friends, then I would miss the so assignment time, and then there's penalty for this, and that's what I'm going to pay. So that's a course, okay? So you think you compare these benefits to the course, and then you decide, well, it seems rational now. You see rational? Uh, this, this rationality comes from your side. So it seems rational now to spend more time or to spend more or one more hour uh, studying. Yeah. So it's basically a decision based on your choosing. Yes, exactly. 
Exactly. So that's, that's the cost. You compare benefits to cost, and the cost is the opportunity cost. And as I said, whenever you make choice, that means you've, you've given up something else. So, and that is the opportunity cost. That's the cost of your choice. Okay? Any, any more questions? So, I think now it's uh, probably the, the choosing at the margin is one of the uh, important uh, concepts in economics because we will always think of the marginal cost, the marginal benefits, the marginal revenue as you as you go <coughs> to the material you see that the margin is very important concept in economics. So you need to think of that. So, uh, the, for example, when we, when we think of the uh, uh, as I said, when, when, you, when, you, when you have one hour study, one, one hour to study, one hour, one more hour to study, that is the margin because that can, like, you increase that one by one minute. And then you see, you compare to the cost and the benefit, and then you decide. So, choices respond, respond to incentives. And the idea here in economics is that you can predict how choices will change by looking at changes in incentives. So that's, that's the main point here. So as an economist, you could make some prediction based on how the incentives change, then you can predict what people can do. Okay? So in today's lecture, in the second lecture, for example, we will see when, uh, when people uh, would income increase, for example, so what would you do? You expect it to buy more or less from your product. So we'll see how, how this would make us or would enable us economists, to predict the, what would people do and then how we would use this to make decisions as well. This is something we're probably going to cover in the um, next lecture. So, so now we talk about the economic problem, the 14 course. We talk about the uh, big two question that shows the uh, school of economics, we talk about how to think as a class. So when we study economics, we can study economics at two different levels. And that's what we're going to cover for the rest of this term. Microeconomics and macroeconomics. So micro means this is a small level. Macro, this means the aggregate level. So when we think of microeconomics, we look, we're thinking of how individuals make their decision to make their choices, how firms, individual firms, how they make their choices, and so on. So we're looking at one, one unit. But when we think of uh, the macro economy, or the mac macro economics, we look at the aggregate level. So we're looking at all firms, all individuals in the same time. So we're looking at, so there are different, different topics we cover in each one of these. So first we start with microeconomics, um, and then we will, uh, when we finish microeconomics, or the topics that we need to cover in microeconomics, we move to macroeconomics. So it's very important you have to understand the difference between these two. So the study of economics would be at um, different levels. These levels, as I said, microeconomics, macroeconomics, and the way we think of these uh, is um, the units you're looking at. So if you're looking at individual units, and again, these things could be individuals, firms, and, and, and so on. So in that case, we will uh, be looking at macroeconomics, but if you look at the aggregate uh, level, that is uh, macroeconomics. So as an example of the topics we cover in microeconomics, we'll be looking today at demand and supply. So we'll be looking basically how the prices are determined in a single market. So if you look at the... Um, market of chocolate or whatever data or any product, we'll think today how the prices are determined. So, how the prices is set in the market. So, that's the interaction between supply and demand. <coughs> Later on in the term, we'll, in the next lectures, we'll be looking at how uh, the consumer um, would maximize their satisfaction because that's what any consumer will be after and how the user would maximize their products. So again, we're looking at consumer, producer, we're looking at the market of, uh, the market of uh, chocolate, the paper, so we're looking at one bit. So that's my quick analysis, okay? So um, also we'll look at the cost of production from the, um, 
uh, firm's point of view or the producer's point of view, and then we'll look at different market structure. So these are what or are examples of the topics that we're going to cover this term in my papers. As you see, we're looking at individual rates. So we're not looking at the bigger picture or the whole economy. Now when we, when we move to the macroeconomics, you'll see how we talk about an employment rate. So unemployment in the whole economy. We'll talk about inflation in the whole economy. We'll talk about how uh, macro policies, macroeconomic policies are set, like how we talk about fiscal policy, monetary policy, how the government change when they change taxes or when they give subsidies, how this affects economic activity and so on.